It's easily the biggest crisis to hit a car maker in recent years. In September, Volkswagen was found to be cheating emissions tests on their diesel cars in America. With 11 million vehicles affected worldwide, costing the company an estimated $7 billion to recall, and a third wiped off the value of its shares, it's no laughing matter in Wolfsburg. <laughs> but it's not just the reputational damage to VW. Recent studies reveal the human costs of emissions such as fine particulates and nitrogen oxides, so it's no wonder the crisis has coughed up headlines, calling these the last days of diesel. So these are things we should be concerned about. The question is, what's the answer? Cleaner diesels and people not cheating tests is one answer. Another answer is two competing technologies. One's electric cars, which you might have seen out on the roads. But this is a hydrogen car, and hydrogen cars have been one of those things that has always been just around the corner. And now all of a sudden you've got Hyundai here, South Korean car maker, come out of one that you can buy. And also Toyota has come out of one you can buy as well. Advantages in terms of emissions, the only emission out the back of the car is water, either as water vapour or droplets, so you have no CO2, no NOx, no particulates, uh, so zero harmful emissions. Is that water safe to drink? Uh, we wouldn't necessarily recommend it because depending on um, external ambient uh, temperatures and pressures, uh, it can be mildly acidic. I wouldn't make a habit out of drinking it, but... Tastes fine. Well, it's something I've never done with my diesel car, I can tell you that. Like an electric vehicle, it's an electric motor that turns the wheels. However, with a fuel cell car, this power is generated internally using two tanks of hydrogen. That hydrogen is combined with oxygen, which you take from the surrounding air. Mm -hmm. The two mix, which causes an electrochemical reaction uh, and a split of the hydrogen's protons and electrons. The electrons are forced around a circuit, which provides power to your motor. They combine with the oxygen atoms on the other side of the fuel cell stack to give you H2O, so obviously water vapour. You have the advantages of petrol and diesel in terms of range, performance, uh, certainly refill times. You have the advantages of an electric vehicle, so zero emissions, it's very smooth to drive, very relaxing to drive, instant torque, instant power, um, but you don't have any of the negatives of either of those two technologies. There's no behavioural change required either, it's, it's, it's business as normal. However, the price you pay compared to a conventional car is anything but normal. Hyundai's top-of-the-range diesel equivalent is £32,000. By contrast, a fuel cell-powered iX35 will set you back £53,000. And that includes 15 grand worth of subsidies. So you've got to wonder... Why would I not go and buy an electric sports car like a Tesla for the same price? There's, there's no argument for that. Yes, you can. Um, but it's, it's very much a different... It's a different market, it's a different vehicle. We're not trying to be a Tesla, we're not trying to compete with Tesla. Mm. If you look at the cost of electric vehicle technology, it started off in a very similar vein to where we are here, very expensive. What we're seeing with hydrogen is very quickly the vehicles are coming down in price. Refueling station coming up here. Okay, so the price may come down in the future, but even if you do have the money now, where do you charge oh, it up? Petrol station. I can't charge there. In fact, no one can charge at that one because it's shut at the moment. <laughs> got, uh, what we've got there on the board. Regular unleaded, regular diesel. Where's, yeah, where's, the, where's the regular hydrogen? Beep your horn. Honestly. Hmm. Considering hydrogen's the most abundant element in the universe, it's surprisingly difficult to find it on a forecourt sign. If this is going to become a widespread reality rather than just a nice demonstration project for a few select companies and individuals, then hydrogen does need to get that sort of ubiquity that you know of having petrol stations all over the place like that. In fact, after starting out in Hendon in North London, the next nearest hydrogen refueling station was in Heathrow. Uh, I now can boast that I have been to half of the refueling stations in the UK. Um, this is two or four. This is one of the first in the UK actually, and as you can see, it's quite busy. Filling up a hydrogen car does feel very familiar, and it's much quicker to do than an electric vehicle plugged into the mains. However, to fill up the iX35 costs about 56 quid, about the same as a petrol car. And as most refuelling stations aren't generating hydrogen on site or from renewable energy, there's still a sizeable carbon footprint. So what's the verdict? With electric cars cheaper to run, backed up by 10,000 charging points and easily powered with renewable energy, hydrogen still has a lot of ground to cover before it can really take off. Driverless cars are coming to the streets of Britain, or at least to the pavements of Milton Keynes. 
This is one of three public trials of autonomous vehicles as developers start to turn their prototypes into the driverless cars of the future.